Let me exhale. Gently opening our eyes, bringing our thumbs to the center of our palms, all the other fingers wrapped around, bringing our elbows parallel to the floor, um, fist facing forward. So bring your elbows back, inhale, exhale, and just have the side of your arms touch. Inhale, exhale, all through the nose. Keep a mental focus between your eyebrows. Nirmala was speaking a lot about love in the last session. So right now we're focusing on magnetizing the energy around our heart center, around our lungs. Every morning it's important to consciously open the heart center through movement, through breath. Last minute. We can also see this movement as a protection. We open up and we, then we protect. Huh? We need to do both with our heart center. Good. And inhale, open. Exhale, open your eyes and just move your hands around your heart center, the palms facing away from each other, forward. Rotate. And then close your eyes, have the rotation go as fast as possible. And you will experience when you start to think you <laughs> the hands bump against each other. So see that you just stay in the no mind, focus on your third eye. Creating a lot of the air element, which the heart is thriving on. Good, and for the remaining minute, go a little faster. Go as fast as you can. Stimulating the heart chakra. Last 30 seconds, go faster, faster, faster. Get out of your head, into your heart. Fifteen seconds, fast, fast, fast. Good, and then have your palms facing forward, inhale through your nose, suspend your breath, pull the perineum, sex organ and navel in and up, pull the energy from the base through your spine to the top of your head.
and we exhale. We open our eyes, we bring the arms up, and then we just bring, you know, we go like down, like this. So we intermingling, and then we go up, we intermingling the feminine and the masculine, going down the different sides of our body, going up, going down. Really move your wrists. They are connected to our pituitary gland. Bring a lot of movement into it. Moving down and moving up. The last 30 seconds. Allow the energy to just flow. And one more time up. And then we go down again. And palms facing forward, inhale, suspend your breath, or the perineum, sex organ, navel, in and on. Hold your attention and your crown. Exhale. Open your eyes, keep your hands here. Inhale, through the open mouth now. As if you want to suck air in from your palm, exhale, nose. Consciously pull in the prana, the life force that you want today. Pull it into your mouth. Here it's important to have it through the open mouth. Exhale, nose. Really suck in as much prana as you like. Last repetition. Palms forward, inhale, apply again. Contract the muscles of your rectum, sex organ, navel, pull the energy up to the top of your head. Exhale. Open your eyes, tip of your thumb to tip of the index finger, your pointer finger, right arm moves overhead. So my head stays stable. I'm not moving my sh shoulders, so to speak. I just move my arms, clearing the energetic field around my head and my heart. The divine and your astral plane. And just let it flow. I'm sure that your hands go behind your head. Mm -hmm. 
this is always great to do if, if we feel like a little fogged in our head. This is a great movement to apply. Just a little bit more. And then we bring our hands back, palms facing forward. Inhale deeply. Suspend your breath. Pull on your perineum, sex organ and navel. Pull up. Exhale. Open your eyes, interlace all your fingers, except your index fingers. They touch and their extended thumbs cross over each other. And we start our breath of fire. Remember that's an equal in an exhale through your nose. And it's not too fast. It has a nice little rhythm as if you put air into the fireplace. You don't do it like rapidly. You'd have a nice rhythm. We go like. <laughs> Focus on your navel and your diaphragm. Pushing the prana from your third chakra into the heart and the centers above. Last minute. Inhale deeply, suspend your breath, apply your root lock, pull the energy from the base through your spine to the top of your head, hold the energy there. And then we exhale through the open mouth like Resting our hands onto our knees, palms facing upward, taking just a moment to integrate what we did so far. Regulating our breath. Feeling into our chest. And then we are ready for Nicola. Thank you, Siddhi, for settling us. <laughs> Namaskaram, ladies. Good morning, beautiful ladies. I um, want to share a couple of things first before we begin. 
I have placed the uh, Monday Maya Tree meditation um, link in our chat section so that you can share it. It's just such we've now it'll be our third Monday on this Monday and third or fourth. Not sure. Um, it's been so lovely to start the week out with an offering, a peaceful offering into the world that allows us to gather all of the feelings that we have about the movement that's in the world right now and be able to find a place to expand our heart and allow those feelings to be sort of, you know, evened out in our conscious and intentional opening of our heart, regardless of judgment, concern, fear, all of the things that come along with how we are feeling about the world as it is right now. So I invite you to join us just a half an hour, 7.30 to 8 on Monday mornings. And there's the Zoom link. It's also, I have said this, but I'm going to repeat it so that we're all in being reminded that um, on my website, the sharedwisdom.org website, all of the Zoom links are up now. So you can find the Zoom links to our Sangha gathering, to the Monday Maya Tree Meditation, to the um, uh, circle, our deep listening circle, all of the different things that are going on, you can find the direct link so that it's a little more accessible. Um, so today, that's that. Today, I'd like to speak about becoming. Um, there's a lot of discussion in spiritual circles about how we evolve and how we become something that's out here. And I want to talk about the notion that one never becomes. There's not a process that leads us to becoming. We think so. And so we structure all sorts of boxes that we can live in so that we might become something that's more definable. So we want to give a label to what we do, how we are, who we are in the world. So that's our becoming. But the situation with becoming is that it leads us away from being. So instead of living as we want to be in the moment of inspiration, in the moment of what's coming to us in life, we concentrate on this becoming something other than. So when we're looking to become, we're attempting to arrive somewhere, to move to a new position. Maybe it's with our health. Maybe it's with our spiritual discipline. Maybe in our relationships, our attitudes, our careers. It's like a... Um, we're always looking how to get make ourselves better then. But somehow there's a, a brokenness in how we are and we need to fix that. And then when we get to that, there's always another brokenness underneath of that layer. And so this is a cunning strategy that the mind uses to deceive us because the mind is most interested in keeping us wanting to get to something far away so that we can be led away from here so at least our attention will be led away from here. Our attention will not be here, it'll be there. And we'll never actually get there. So we're going from here to there. Slowly, slowly, we acquire this habit, this habit of always looking there, someplace else, someplace that we actually can't reach. Because when we get there, there's now a new place in our focus. So we're constantly moving towards something other than who we are now. And we give labels to this. We say that this becoming is our maturation. It's our expanding nature or our growth. It's our developing. We're acquiring new qualities in ourself, which may all be true in our natural evolution that's happening anyway. But we attribute it to this becoming and going somewhere else, becoming something else. So we're looking outside instead of inside to have validation of who we are becoming. In this effort of becoming this and that, we're losing the being of who we are here and now. So we're losing the position of presence. This is really important, the position of presence. We're losing the quality of being in the here and now 
we're abdicating for becoming something else that we believe when we get there, then we can be present. What we're losing is time. This is a fine, we have a finite amount of time to do this process and to enjoy this process in this body. We're losing life energy, life force that's getting put into the inquiry and the concern and the worry and the structure of becoming something else. It's like looking on the horizon when we see that it seems like it's quite close and we're moving towards it. And then the closer we get, it still moves away from us. We can never actually arrive on the horizon. The distance is always there. We will never arrive at something in an exterior experience. You might physically end out somewhere. You might take on one new habit. But everything that we're doing that's an exterior movement is a movement away from the interior position of presence that we have naturally. We sacrifice what's freely available to us when we are searching in front of us instead of searching inside of us. So one does not become, you are already home. Your birth was your becoming. This is really important for us. Our birth was the becoming. Now we're refining, but the becoming already happened. We came into this physical form. That's the biggest birth, the biggest becoming that you're ever going to do in your life was coming into this body, squeezing yourself back into this form. We're just like everything else in existence, the animals, the birds, the trees, they don't ask themselves, how do I become something other than what I am? Or I don't, I'm presuming they don't ask themselves, how do I become something other than what I am? So this process of becoming makes us insane, basically, because it drives us to jump from this and that, never resting into the present moment. Never resting into the present moment is tiring. Existence created us to be just who we are. We have been created as individuals, unique. Nothing in existence is duplicated to be just like you are. In your own beauty and your own glory, you are the blessing as you arrived in your becoming at your birth. And there's no becoming into this uniqueness of you. You don't arrive at your uniqueness. You came in with your uniqueness. And the attempt to become something that we have as a construct, a mental construct, takes us away from the beauty of who we are in this moment already, where we have already arrived. So when we realize that our location is exactly where it should be, we can relax into ourselves. This is a really important piece because we're when you're searching outside and trying to move towards some new paradigm, it's exhausting. There's no relaxing. There's no relaxing. But when we realize that we can, our location and where we are now is exactly where we should be, we can relax into this. And what happens in that relaxation as that is that we naturally adopt behaviors and habits that are appropriate for us. We drop judgments that no longer suit us. So they're the efforting that we've been doing to control how we are eating or how we are in relationship or how we are in our spiritual practice. All of these containers that we keep trying to put ourselves into and try to structure our day so that we can become that get dropped. Because the behaviors and the habits that are necessary for our, our own internal evolution will happen naturally. See, our focus is in the wrong place. We're focusing on becoming instead of being. If we focus on being where we are, the changes in our soul's highest calling will be easily met. You don't have to search for it. We search outside, what's the right inspiration? What's the right job? What's the right relationship? Looking outside for finding this answer that's actually internal. So when we stop having judgments of ourselves and we stop grasping for who we are, when we're searching outside of ourselves, we're actually grasping. This is the Buddhist concept of grasping where all suffering actually evolves out of. When we stop having the judgments of where we should be, 
and we allow ourselves to be where we are, we stop grasping. And it also helps us to stop having judgments on others. First, we take life on as a non-judgmental process for ourselves. Then we can work into the world with that same non-judgment. Naturally, naturally, our system wants balance and equanimity. Everybody wants balance and equanimity. We want it and everybody else, all sentient beings want it. We want balance in our health. We want healthfulness and well-being. We want balance in our relationships. We want balance in how our day is structured. We go to a lot of effort to make our day structured in a way that we feel like we're getting all of these different things in, whether it's relationships and free time and meditation time and work time and reading time and all of these structures we put into place so we can have balance, which is already intuitively natural within us. But we don't listen. Only our mind's idea is there is a need for us to arrive someplace that we aren't already in. And that keeps us from simply dropping into the internal state of natural balance that we already have. We just aren't listening to ourselves. We're going outside for the validation of something that we then think is going to give us a sense of completeness and fullness instead of dropping into ourselves. When we're relaxed into self, we naturally make adaptations, adjustments, commitments to live in balance. The balance is not outside. The balance is an internal recognition of self. One interesting experience I had with this was when I became a vegetarian. I didn't like choose a day and say, okay, you're going to stop eating meat and this and that on this day. One day I just couldn't have it any longer. I woke up and I couldn't eat meat. And then I couldn't eat chicken and then I couldn't eat fish. And I, there was no construct that I had to adhere to that said, you shouldn't because you want to be a vegetarian. It was a natural adaptation of the natural balance within myself that I came to see when I spent more time looking internally and experiencing the balance that was natural to my system versus going outside and hearing, well, if you're studying and you're going to India and you're doing this and that, you should be a vegetarian. That's an external construct that somebody else has decided. I didn't have to do that. If I had done that, it probably would have been much more difficult for me to have become a vegetarian because it would have been a construct that I had to squeeze into rather than one that naturally arose. When we reach things naturally through our own settledness, there's no grasping, but there's always efforting. So we want to divide and separate between going out and we aren't just sitting waiting for life to happen and hoping that it happens to us. We also effort. But there's a difference between efforting and grasping. So efforting is that we become fully present in every activity and relationship that we're in. And oh, isn't it interesting that being fully present means we can't be out into the future trying to answer some construct that we think is going to happen or that we're aiming for. If this relationship becomes this, I'll be content. Or if I can learn how to eat this way, I'll be content. No. That's grasping, but efforting is that when we have decided to do something, we put our full fullness, we bring our fullness to it. So efforting means that we take time and energy and a thought process around whatever it is that we're doing. We're not just aimlessly hoping that we have a revelation about how it is we should be in the world. We're participating, we're co-creating in our life, but we're not grasping. We're not grasping. We're fully present and we're fully committed to whatever activity we're doing, but we're not grasping. So when you relax into self, you naturally collide with your own balance, with an ease that will take on the necessary rhythms and practices that are appropriate for you. You are now where you think you're trying to reach. You are already there. But the expression of it, because it's an internal location, can be difficult to see. So our practice is not to go out and find that which we need to be doing. It's to go inside and relate to it and to sink into that which is already the truth of who we are. We use the term potential to signify that we have not reached our fullness. I'm going to work on my all of these different things and reach my potential. 
but we've gotten this wrong. Potential is the awareness of our fullness that's already there. It's not an action to become full. It's awareness. Potential is awareness. You are already a seed of potentiality and you live into that. You don't go out and find it. We want to be the fullness that we already are, which means we may adhere to certain structures and rituals and disciplines and eating habits, which is all fine. But we didn't go out and search for them and bring them back to us. Give yourself permission to sink into this truth that you're exactly where you are meant to be. We simply have to open up the floodgates of what we can see as an internal. This is why our third eye is so important. See the unseen to know the truth. Don't miss where you are already. Give yourself permission to enjoy life and to enjoy yourself because you are already home. You're already home. So that is our affirmation for this week. I am already home. I am already home. It's not an external search. It's an internal knowing.